that was not even the weirdest thing to happen this week. Fucking Dave and Dante hanging out with Mr. 24 Karat Magic Bruno Mars. Uh, well, Dante, we'll start with you. You you hung out with him back to back fucking nights. How was he? Fucking awesome, man. He's, he seems uh, really cool. He is. Um, I never met Prince. I was sued <laughs> by Prince. Wait, 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 wait. Hold the fuck on. You were sued by Prince? Oh, yeah, that's a good story for another time. I got sued by Prince's estate, but... What better place in here? <laughs> I never met Prince. I never met Prince, but I would like to think that Bruno is the closest living thing to Prince. He has so much swag, and he's a, he's a tiny guy, but he walks with, like, an 18-inch dick. Mm. It, oh, yeah. I've never, I've never seen anything like it. His voice... His voice makes you want to, like, take your clothes off when he talks to you. <laughs> He's so smooth. You guys are laughing, but I'm, I'm telling you. I, I, mean, I, no, I, 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 th- I think the, I think the headline here is that Dante was seduced by Bruno. <laughs> I think so. Dude, He's one of those he, guys that just seduces is, everything around him. 100%. It's Prince. Dogs are walking down Prince. the street, and they get those little pink things hanging out of their dick when they look <laughs> at him. Dog dick. <laughs> Yo, remember... Remember uh, Jafar's like snake in yeah. in, in Aladdin. Where are you going with Eyes? this? <laughs> yeah, he wears sunglasses, but that's what his like voice is like. You sit there oh. and you listen to him, and you're just like mesmerized. mesmerized. Bro, we were just oh. talking about eighteen inch dicks and dog dicks, and you're like, you <laughs> yeah, remember? Yeah, and remember. He's just, <laughs> yo, and he's just so cool and nonchalant, and it's like, dude, you fucking <laughs> played two Super Bowls. You are like the modern day, like Michael Jackson slash James Brown slash Elvis, and he just ca- he just carries himself so casually, so cool. I mean, he's fu- he's fucking awesome, man. And his rum, Salvare, shout it's out. awesome. It's no, awesome. No bullshit. It's fucking it's, good. Yeah, it it stands it stands alone. Like even if he didn't rep it and own it. It is an awesome, awesome, awesome product. I, I would love to really them. like rum because it's so sugary and it fucks up my stomach after I have a few, but yeah. we were, I'll get to it. I'll get to it in a little bit, but <laughs> we were pounding it all night. I was fine. But it, like, I, I drank one glass on the rocks, which I don't like to do with rum. Mm-hmm. And I was like, holy shit, this is like actually fucking delicious. Dante, what's the comparative rum? Is it a spice rum or is it like a Bacardi? No, it's, uh, it's organic cane. They have a they have a plantation in Panama. The guys that started the story's fucking crazy. We're gonna we're gonna get him on. We're gonna talk all about it. I, I like have already laid the groundwork, but um, the story behind it is incredible. He's super involved. He's not just like a face who you know makes money on residuals. He's like. All behind the branding, all behind the packaging. Cheers, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah dude. I'm empty handed, dog. He, I mean, he did a three city tour this week. He did Charlotte, Chicago, Cleveland, which, and this is what I loved about him is him and his team were explaining to me, they were like, listen, we could do what everyone else fucking does when they launch products and do New York, LA, and Miami. Those markets don't give a fuck. Facts. A new thing launches every week. It barely makes a blip on the radar. They're like, we go to markets like these, and it's a huge deal. Like last yeah, yeah, night yeah. was probably the last night was like the biggest thing that's happened in Cleveland since the Cavs winning the championship. I mean. <laughs> Bruno Mars coming to Cleveland, it was fucking insanity. Um, so they know like that, like, you know, reverberates and people appreciated it. It got the word out about the product. Like Dave said, tried the rum, it's lights out. How much uh, does a bottle of that cost? So the, the coconut, the white, and the chocolate, they're not that bad. I think they're like 30, 40 bucks a bottle. The reserve, which I gave you, which we yeah. were drinking on the rocks, which sips like 1942, honestly. It's so fucking smooth. 
it's rum, obviously not skill. That's like a buck fifty a bottle. I, that's oh, okay. that's the exact number I was gonna put on it because I got whistle pig that I oh you got me a bottle too. That's almost gone. Thank you, Dante. Yeah, I'll I'll get I'll get it's you a, a bottle of reserve, Dave. I, I'm like that's like my new go to. I'm I'm obsessed with. I no, go. here this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna send one to Kenny for oh. being a dad. Well, no, I I want to get them to sponsor our show. Is what I want to do. I'm all in. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll be the fun, fucking cause... biggest rum guy on earth if I will do that. I will fucking I will, I will... mainline it into this oh, pipe IV of a drip, bicep. dude. Yeah, well, I, just... I I told I told them I said you know two of my most like people I look up to the most like two of my biggest idols were rum guys Ernest Hemingway and Hunter S Thompson huge rum guys. I mean, to be fair, Hunter S. Thompson was kind of an everything guy. He just yeah, he he, <laughs> did, he didn't hold no prejudice against that damn thing. I mean, I mean, narcotics, yes, but he was he was a big rum guy. Yo, uh, I will push rum. <laughs> I will gladly because first of all, Bruno Mars is the man. When you that was the most casual shit ever. Where in our group chat, it was like, yeah, we're gonna be hanging out with Bruno Mars this weekend, and I was like, okay, cool, that's <laughs> fucking great. Like, thanks, dude. like what? Well, dude, I I didn't want to like. It's happened to me so many times where things have been told and oh, yeah, yeah. You you promote it, you announce it, and it falls through. And I, I was just like, there's no way Bruno Mars is showing up anywhere. He's fucking uber famous. For fact, yeah. he doesn't need to do any of this shit. The fact he showed up like blows my mind. And the fact that he was so fucking cool. And he did, dude, he did, th- he did, we calculated it. Over three days, he did 23 appearances. Jesus they did, Christ. They did eight in Charlotte. They did seven in Chicago. And they did like another eight in Cleveland. Dude. And like they- Wait, wait, they wait. wait there's... Uproar. They were at Uproar in Chicago, my bar. Uh, Thursday night? No, Tuesday night. They went right to the airport, flew to Cleveland, landed at three in the morning. They're up at noon. They were at like a giant distributor grocery store, taking signing autographs, taking pictures. Then they bounced to like another bar. I mean, it's like he he did the damn thing, man. He's he's uh, he's the real deal. He's, he's a, a hustler. Monster. He's a hustler. Yeah, so yeah. we are officially a Bruno Mars pocket. Like we're that's the fucking homie right there. Obviously, so fucking big shout out to carat. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like this shit's getting weird because we went from fucking Black Keys to Ice Cube to fucking Lil Wayne moment, Bruno Mars. Like this is well, this if we're gonna if if this is a music podcast, baby, gotta be eclectic. You know we what I mean? No, I'm just saying. Like those are big names. There were times when we couldn't get motherfuckers. This is sick. 